Hey, and welcome to another episode of A Dramatic Soprano Tries Cooking. Today, we will be returning to An Unexpected Cookbook, the unofficial book of Hobart Cookery, to finish our ring cycle with Melanie Spector, the Crafting Coloratura. And since it is my birthday weekend, no, it's not my 100th birthday like Mr. Bilbo. I will be trying to make honey cakes today. Yum. A dramatic soprano tries cooking. This is it. This is what? If I take one more step, I will be the farthest away from home I have ever been. For this recipe, you're gonna need some flour and baking powder. Salt, but you don't have to be salty. Room temperature butter. Now the recipe does say dried blueberries or raisins. I went for dried cherries instead, and you'll see why in a second. Here's why. Because it calls for a zest of lemon, but I can't eat lemons, so I have a lime. And I love cherry limeade, so... Plus, it's my birthday weekend. I'm gonna do what I want, just like Mr. Bilbo. Except I don't think I'm gonna disappear. But maybe? Let's see. I'm back. Don't worry, there's more ingredients. Whole milk, one egg, and of course honey. They are honey cakes. And now here's another deviation from the recipe. You're supposed to have candied almonds for decoration. It does say it's optional. I couldn't get any. So I'm just gonna use some chopped pecans from my scorpion pie episode. And of course, any good hobbit has to have some ale while drinking. And since it is still autumn, I'm going to drink the autumn autumnal equinox sour ale. Cheers. It comes in pints. First thing the directions tell us to do is preheat the oven to 400. One more. Then you're going to mix a cup and a fourth of flour, a teaspoon and a half of baking powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Then whisk. You don't need to whisk with a fork. I used my whisker this morning to make a smoothie, so fork it is! Now take off your rings for the next part. Just trust me. You're gonna mix in your butter until it's a gravelly consistency. I'm assuming it's something like pie dough. I'm a dirty hobbitses now. I would say that's gravel-like consistency. Now you're gonna add a half a cup of your raisins or blueberries, whatever you got and your zest of lemon, or in my case, lime. And mix. Now, in another bowl, mix three-fourths cup of milk, your egg, and three-fourths cup of honey. Add it to your mixture and then mix until there are just a few lumps. As always, this is Dramatic Soprano Tries Cooking, so I am bound to always make a mistake. So I forgot to take out the muffin tray out from under my oven before I preheated it, so now it's probably boiling hot, so I can't quite use that for this. So I'm gonna think about this and improvise. After some thought, I've decided instead of cakes, this will just be cake. So I'm gonna use this cheesecake pan and overly butter it so we can get the cake, not cakes, out. Hobbits can be very resourceful. For the first bake, you put it in for 12 minutes. When you stick the thing in it, the cake should be firm, but the inside should be gooey because this is a twice baked cake. So here we go, 12 minutes. 
So to conclude our Lord of the Rings ring cycle, tune into my Instagram at Soprano Sam Nera to see me try out the crafting color Taurus Good and Dumbarrow pattern. I don't think I will be coming back. Yes, you will. Of course you will. That's just morbid thinking. We're going there and back again, just like Mr. Bilbo. Okay, let's see if it still has a gooey consistency. Oh, it made it hooked all the way through. I guess then I'll probably just put it in for less time second time around. While it's still hot, I'm gonna add my pecan decorations. I'm gonna add a few cherries to the decorations just because. Drink up. Because this next part has the potential to be really, really messy because you need to take a fourth a cup of honey and drizzle it on top. You have to take it out of the pan first though, so I'm gonna try and set something under the cooling rack so I don't gunk out my whole counter. If you could see from the video, I really did butter this up good, but some of it is coming off of the collar. Ah, but not too much, just, just a wee bit. All right, now we just gotta free it from the bottom. Cause I'm afraid if I keep it on, it'll just gunk up the bottom and then, you know, mess up my whole, <laughs> my whole oven. Okay. Uh, this is gonna be tough. After some careful consideration, I'm just gonna glaze it and go for it and just put a, a baking tray under it in the oven and hope for the best. All right, here goes the drizzle. Now it does say you can heat this up. So I think I'm gonna heat it up and I am gonna add a little bit of lime juice to it just to up the lime. FYI, it says 15 to 20 seconds for that microwave of that honey. Now you need to let it sit for five minutes so the honey can soak in. Yum! Okay, it's been five minutes, so back into the oven it goes. Now the directions say for 10 to 15 minutes, but since the cake is basically already baked, I think I'm just gonna go for like six or seven. We'll see how it turns out. It's supposed to create a nice crispy exterior. I took some of the cake from the ring. <laughs> the ring! My precious! <laughs> to see if I could try it. <laughs> kind of just your basic cake. It's not very sweet. It almost tastes like um, a cornmeal bread or something, but <laughs> no cornmeal. The replacement honey. Just like butter bread. Okay, it's out of the oven. I would say it's golden brown on top. Maybe it could go in for a few more minutes. But I'm a hungry hobbit see, so we're not gonna wait. I can't do this, Sam. I know. It's all wrong. By rights, we shouldn't even be here. But we are. It's like in the great stories, Mr. Frodo, the ones that really mattered full of darkness and danger they were, and sometimes you didn't want to know the end because how could the end be happy? How could the world go back to the way it was when so much bad had happened? But in the end, it's only a passing thing, this shadow. Even darkness must pass. A new day will come, and when the sun shines, it will shine out the clearer. Those were the stories that stayed with you, that meant something, even if you were too small to understand why. But I think, Mr. Frodo, I do understand. I know now, folks in those stories had lots of chances of turning back, only they didn't, because they were holding on to something. What are we holding on to, Sam? That there's some good in this world, Mr. Frodo, and it's worth fighting for. So like most of my geeky cookbooks I own, there is a cute little like passage at the beginning about the recipe. So here it is. Since Tolkien said the Shire was based on nostalgic memories of his childhood, these honey cakes are inspired by late Victorian recipes for twice baked cakes. The second baking ha hardens, <laughs> let me say that again. The second baking hardens the honey glaze in place while firming up the crust giving them a moist, tender exterior and a sweet, crunchy exterior. And then just so you know too, at the bottom of the recipe, it does say 
While they're still perfectly edible days later, if you find yourself the host of an unexpected party, <laughs> these honey cakes are quick to make and taste amazingly fresh from the oven with a bit of jam and clotted cream. They're even better the next day when the crust is nice and crispy and the interior is still soft and moist. Now mine might be a little different because they're meant to be, as you can see from the picture, like multiple little teeny cakes. And mine's one big cake, so I don't know if I'll get the same result. Okay, I've cut myself off a slice. Let's see how it is. Ooh, it's very moist. Mmm. I like it. I like most of the recipes in this unexpected cookbook. The desserts aren't overly sweet, but they're very nice. If you like honey, this is the perfect cake. I am getting the lime. I definitely see why they said blueberry though. Like the cherry's good, but I think the like texture of the honey leans better to um, blueberries than cherries and lime. You do the recipe and let me know. I'm excited to try it tomorrow when this starts to get more crispier. Might have helped too if I had candy pecans. Or candied almonds. <laughs> oh well. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. Remember this holiday season to shop small at businesses like the Crafting Coloratura. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.